Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Darshan Mehta. Let's see what the global queues had set up for us. Uh, the US markets were shut yesterday, so you're not getting any kind of queues from there. But uh, Europe, as as uh, as you know, as the region, uh, did reasonably well. You had uh, the FTSE, which was up close to 1% in trade. The CACs open, ended with a positive pass. As far as Asia is concerned, currently, negative queues coming in. The Nikkei is down uh, in trade currently. Hang Seng is down in trade. Most of the Asian markets are trading with a slight negative bias. There's so this muted trade that's going on. The SDX 50, however, is not indicating any kind of uh, uh, great opening. Uh, it's just up two points at this point of time, indicated that you know, after yesterday's sell-off, uh, trends probably are not on the positive side. But what happened in trade yesterday? The Nifty managed to underperform. The Nifty was down almost 100 points. It was down almost close to 1% compared to two-tenths of a percent that cuts that we saw on the mid-cap and the small-cap end of the market, given the fact that the heavyweight started to fall uh, significantly on the Nifty. As far as uh, the other sectors are concerned, the Nifty Bank was down close to uh, eight tenths of a percent and the nifty psu bank was down almost one percent in trade and icici bank was one of the reason why the nifty bank fell in trade metals pretty much was one of the only sectors that managed to inch up in trade was up almost three tenths of a percent but some of the other sectors that you saw selling pressure that came in was the oil sector because of reliance and the fmcg sector because most of uh, the companies in the fmcg spec uh, managed to fall in trade yesterday now if you're looking at uh, how, the, how the year has panned out till now it fmcg are the counters in which there is significant amount of outperformance the Sensex has been up almost 12%. So these two sectors have been outperforming the market. But there is pain in the mid-cap and the small-cap end of the market. The small-cap is down 15%. Media and real estate down anywhere between 18 to 20% in trade. Now, if you're looking at uh, the fund flows, FIs were sellers, DIs were net sellers. And on a YTD basis, FIs still continue to remain net sellers in the market. Now, if you're looking at what happened with the Nifty and the contribution, it was basically the FMCG pack, HUL and ITC, which brought down the Nifty. ICICI Bank brought down the Bank Nifty. And Reliance, which is one of the largest weights on the Nifty uh, itself got down the Nifty. What contributed was basically the HDFC twins. Dr. Reddy's and Aisha Motors, even though they moved up 4 to 5%, their Nifty, their Nifty weightage is very very small, so that pretty much couldn't move the needle for the Nifty. Now, fresh short positions were seen on the Nifty futures. If you're looking at the open interest, that saw a build-up of half a percent. The Nifty bank also saw fresh shots, but the open interest build-up was close to 5% on the Nifty bank. What we're seeing currently is that, you know, still there is uh, enough space for the Nifty to grow because call writers are active at 11,700 and 11,800, while put writers still continue to be bullish at the 11,700 and the 11,600 mark in trade. Even yesterday, there was no unwinding that you saw because that was the start of the series. But the 11,700 and 11,800 call writers became aggressive, but put writers still continue to write in at the 11,600 and 11,700 mark in trade. Now, the Nifty PCR came down given the fact that the Nifty was weak. Similar was the case with the Nifty Bank PCR that also managed to come down in trade. Uh, no stocks in the FNO band, but certain stocks I want to highlight. Wipro saw fresh buying on open interest build up of 15% on the long side. Escorts was one of the other counters with saw fresh shots on open interest build up of 20%. And uh, Balkrishna Industry trades came out with a sudden capex which the market didn't like fresh shots were seen open interest build up of 18 percent on the counter so these are the domestic cues that you're getting at this point of time but let's go across to paul allen for all the top international headlines Western Japan is battening down the hatches in the face of what could be the strongest storm to make landfall in a quarter of a century. Category 3 Typhoon Jebi is expected to cross the coast of Shikoku sometime on Tuesday and is the 21st storm of the season. Jebi is expected to weaken slightly in the coming hours but will still bring winds gusting up to 160 kilometers per hour. China is using a meeting of African leaders in Beijing to counter criticism that its vast development plans on the continent are saddling emerging economies with debt. The Forum on China-Africa Cooperation provides a high-profile chance for President Xi Jinping to defend his Belt and Road Initiative, but he told his audience he has no interest in forming an exclusive club with competing vanity projects. Bank of England Governor Mark Carney has the chance later to put speculation about his future to rest. He's scheduled to face Treasury Committee questions about bank policy, but it's what Carney does next that's been making headlines in the UK. The BBC says he's in talks about staying on as Governor beyond his planned departure date in June next year. The bank and the Treasury declined to comment. 
One of Thailand's leading political parties says it's confident long-delayed elections will happen next year. The ruling junta has repeatedly pushed back a vote, but says it should take place in the first half of 2019. Former Prime Minister Abhisit Vajicheva told Bloomberg he's optimistic, though he's yet to say if he will run for office. However, he says his Democrat party offers the best alternative. I don't think that the country has to choose between a corrupt regime and a dictatorial one. The Thai people deserve better and the Democrat Party will do its best to represent that better alternative. Global News 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. There's a lot of focus on the Asian market because um, Asia is uh, the world's biggest buyer of crude at the moment. Um, and initially, China and um, India had come out and they were, they were pushing back quite strongly against the US, um, arguing that they don't want to cut their imports from uh, Iran. But the reality is that they have actually started cutting. Um, I think the Chinese um, refiners have said their ships aren't going to carry their uh, Iranian crude anymore. Um, also, South Korea have reduced substantially and Japan said that September would probably be their last cargoes that they're going to import from Iran. Um, so even though a lot of com uh, countries seem like they were quite against what Trump was doing, um, the reality is that they're having to cut back now. On to Indian equity market. Stock of the day is Heikel there. Ashush, uh, Ashish Kacholi has bought in a uh, stake of around 1.62 per percent in the count of around 33 crore kind of a concentration. It has bought, he has bought in 20 lakh shares at a price of 166.5 per share, which is at a discount of a 10 percent uh, as per the previous closing uh, market price. But then do bear in mind the fact that the stock in previous session of trade uh, rose as much as 14 percent. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, also, we have uh, Himalaya Finance and Investment Company, which again is an investment, is said to be an associate company for Kacholia, which has picked up around 17 lakh shares uh, of this counter or around 1.4% stake in the company for a consideration for a uh, sum of around 166.5 per share. In terms of seller, you have International Financial Corporation, which has cumulatively sold around more than 3% stake uh, for a price of around 166.5 per share. If you look at the overall shareholding pattern there, promoter shareholding stands at uh, a major 69%, while public shareholding in this counter stands at around 31%. Uh, if you look at the financials of the company, for FI18, the company clocked in the revenue of around more than 1,000 crore, and uh, for the first quarter, it has done a revenue of around 32 crore. In terms of the margins, they're pretty much stable around that 18 to 19% kind of a level. And in terms of the profitability, the company delivered profit of around 70 7 crore for FI18 and around uh, we have seen a 16 crore uh, profit for the first quarter of the financial year. Uh, if you look at the stock returns of the company now, a uh, one month basis, the company has delivered gains of more than 30 percent. Uh, YTD, it's been a 19 percent gain out there, and on yearly basis, the company has done gain of around 35 percent. Uh, now, if you look at what the company is overall, uh, it's a manufacturing of pharmaceutical, agrochemical, and intermediary, it has five uh, manufacturing manufacturing facilities across in Maharashtra, Gujarat and Karnataka. Shifting focus to currency and commodities market, uh, talking about Indian rupee first, uh, the rupee yesterday closed at uh, yet another historic low of 71.21 levels against the dollar. Now remember the home currency did open with strong gains yesterday, largely on the back of better than expected GDP data. However, it reversed all of its gains and ended three tenths of a percent lower versus the dollar yesterday. Concerns over rising crude oil prices, strong dollar demand and trade war tensions continue new to hurt foreign exchange market sentiments. Well, speaking of the bond market, sovereign bond extend declines as we have seen yields climbing for six uh, for six straight days in a row, its longest streak since a year. Ten-year benchmark bond yield rose nearly five basis point yesterday to end at 8%, its highest level since 11th June. Uh, well, traders do believe that strong GDP print uh, remains negative for bond market as it increases expectations of a rate hike by RBI. On the global front, if you see dollar index, it ended flat yesterday. 
However, it now trades marginally higher, well above the 95 mark in the early Asian hours. So that apart, pound ended lower for the third straight day versus the dollar yesterday, largely on the back of Brexit uncertainty and also on the back of weak manufacturing data. Also, euro slipped one tenth of a percent uh, yesterday versus the dollar after eurozone manufacturing activity slowed down to its uh, lowest pace in overly in over two years. And lastly, if you see dollar rupee now, it is trading flat. the non deliverable forward markets which indicates a flat opening for indian rupee in today's trade having said that let's shift focus to commodity space uh, good morning jayesh what cues are you picking up morning saloni let me start off with the oil prices uh, which have inched up uh, nearly to a two month high on the back of uh, iran shipping the least amount of oil uh, since 2016 in fact iran's exports uh, that fell to less than 2.1 million barrels a day and that was the reason we saw an uptick in the oil prices Currently, also if you look at it, uh, WTI is trading with marginal gains, while Brent is trading about one tenth of a percent in the red. Uh, shifting uh, to the base metal space, the index itself uh, declined for the fourth consecutive day on the London Metal Exchange. Uh, now, lead was the only metal which uh, bucked the trend and ended about two uh, percent higher. And we had zinc, which also closed with marginal amount of gains. Uh, but the, the you know the gain in lead prices uh, came on account of an inventory drop, uh, which Which declined the most since March 2016. Aluminium declined more than one percent uh, on the back of uh, uh, a fresh uh, global trade war concerns coming back into the market, and we had uh, zinc and copper which closed little change. Now, if you look at the Shanghai Futures Exchange, most of these base metals are in fact trading with a negative bias, except for steel, which is trading nearly one percent higher. <laughs> Lastly, as far as uh, gold prices are concerned, uh, we have uh, seen that uh, there's some stability near the 1200 mark. Uh, but you know, you have to remember that yesterday was a U.S. market holiday, and the volumes were very shallow. Well, amongst the stocks to watch is Jet Airways, where Ikra has uh, cut the long-term rating from double B plus to double B. Also, there has been a revision in the short-term rating uh, to A4 from A4 plus. In fact, the rating agency has said that um, a recent rise in jet fuel prices, along with no rise in airfares, has uh, had a resultant impact on the financials, and that's the reason that they have given for their negative outlook on the stock. I uh, remember this is the second time. In the last four months or so, where the rating agency has downgraded the company's credit rating, so troubles continue for Jet Airways. Watch out for that one. Uh, Persistent Systems is next on the list. U.S. Uh, arm of the company has acquired 100% stake in Herald Technologies for 5.2 million dollars, just about 37 crores. This is expected to improve its uh, offering in the healthcare domain. So, uh, not a very big acquisition, but nevertheless, we'll be watching out for this one. VST Tillers has reported its uh, monthly sales for August. Now the total sales have seen a sharp downtick, down 18.6%, uh, and that is mainly on account of sales of tractors having to just 517 units. So a negative reaction possibly for this one. You also have IDB, a bank which will remain in focus. Remember the LIC board meets today uh, to finalize uh, the modalities of increasing the stake in the company. Uh, there. Also set to uh, discuss and finalize the timelines uh, for the open offer, board level appointments, etc. So that's clearly one stock that we are going to be watching out for. And finally, we have Kiloskar Brothers, where in insider trades, the company has acquired a 0.4 percent stake between August 30 to 31st. Uh, so not a very liquid stock, but the promoter uh, has uh, in uh, stake holding has now gone up to 65.9 uh, percent. So that's another stock that you should watch out for. It is also a fact that a lot of people who had the wherewithal uh, did not really feel the heat of demonetization. Perhaps the same set of people for whom it was aimed. Uh, a lot of people found loopholes out of the system. Some, as you mentioned, by being paying salaries in uh, cash in advance. Uh, others found other means to get around it. At the end of the day, after these figures, people are still asking, "What good did it do?" As I said, I was one of the first to have supported it. I continue to support it, and I and I support it for non-economic grounds as well. Because the prime, I was just told that the prime minister had used in his speech of November 9th the word corruption 16 times. Because the one of the basic objectives, one of the principal objectives of demonetization, was to was to push back 
this culture of you know this culture of complete dishonesty and you know and 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 and, and non tax compliance etc and reintroduce some probity integrity and honesty in our society in our system i mean the, the, the fact is and nobody but nobody can deny it that ever since that day you had you have had you had a change in the culture you had a change in the whole sense in which people are going about their economic businesses and the fact remains that you've had a growth in both the tax base and in the tax collections and in the fact that the 23000 about 23000 crore has been seized over and above the 13000 that was not returned why do we keep this narrative going on no, the, the reason is the reason is sir with all due respect the change of culture you are talking about sir so with all due, due respect the change of culture you are talking about and i'm glad you brought out the theme of corruption that was the basic uh, reason why demonetization uh, was implemented where is the evidence uh, to back the claim that corruption has now reduced in this country on a day to day level on an every day level i think if anyone conducts a straw I mean, if, poll if in and around them the, they feel they still have to the, go through it if you if you can't see the evidence tamanna i must say you must be being purposely blind the watering holes of delhi and mumbai and bangalore have stopped there is no high level corruption in any of the government deals in any of the government procurement that you can think about people you constantly bring back petty corruption of the of the of, 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 on the street or what is called the speed money and even there even there a large number of services have now been put on line so that people don't have to pay the speed money to the people concerned including registration of your land properties etc as well as the reimbursement of your tax refund and so on demonetization has not had the kind of negative the effect of 1.5% gdp growth rate being shaved off etc etc that just a completely false narrative instead we now have a much more formal clear cleaner a uh, tax compliant economy which will enable us to sustain high rates of growth without the boom and burst cycle that we have had in the past Let's now look at uh, some of the top stocks to watch based on yesterday's delivery buying and selling. The first one, an index name, uh, Titan. Now that was up about 2.3% uh, in trade and saw delivery buying in excess of 200 crores. The delivery volume more than doubled for itself as compared to the five-day average, and the total volume also surged nearly 77% as compared to its five-day average. Second stock to watch out for Balkrishna Industries. Now that uh, saw a sharp fall of about seven percent and delivery selling of uh, 123 crores. The delivery volume also more than doubled for itself as compared to the five-day average, while the total volume surged a little more than 65 percent as compared to its five-day average. Last and final stock, uh, Wipro. Now that was up about 2.4 percent and saw delivery buying of 173 crores. Though the delivery volume surged marginally at about 66 percent as compared to its five-day average, while the total volume saw a sharp increase of nearly three times as compared to its five-day average. On the big brokerage calls for the day, first we have is IDBI Capital on Moltec Packaging. Now the brokerage has initiated coverage on the stock with a buy rating and a target price of 377, which suggests a potential upside of nearly 18 percent. A strong foothold in the in mold labeling and in-house backward operation integration is the key catalyst for future growth when it comes to Moltec Packaging. Sees the brokerage. Now in the past, the company had focused on capacity addition, and this timely completion of capacity addition now augurs well for the company on the back of the growing demand. for packaging products now growth in paints lube and food and fmcg industry would support a healthy earnings growth for the company going forward says the brokerage and on the back of this the brokerage is expecting the company's revenue abetta and net profit to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 21% 27% and 31% over fy 18 to fy 20 second we have a scotec on city union bank or the brokerage has reduced the rating on the stock to reduce from ad and has raised the target price to 200 from 190 which suggests a potential side of only 2%. So the brokerage has cut the rating on the stock due to recent rally which leaves no upside when it comes to the bank City Union Bank. Now the rally could be on the back of receding concerns on asset quality, loan growth and operating cost of the bank. However, for the bank there have been new concerns says the brokerage which which is the rising interest rate and its inability to pass on this cost to the consumer which could lead to a lower net interest income growth going forward. Lastly the brokerage says that contraction in return on equity and value valuation expansion does not bode well for the bank 
In 2017, nearly 60 million people played fantasy sports in the U.S. and Canada. That's according to the Fantasy Sports Trade Association, who points out that in 2015, 40 million people were playing fantasy football alone. So who plays fantasy sports? Well, more men play than women, with 71% of all fantasy sports players being male. The average age of a player is 32 years old, and 53% of players make a salary of $75,000 or more a year, while 67% are employed full-time. Each player spends an average of $653 a year on fantasy sports, with 70% of players participating in a league that charges a fee. And while fantasy sports is a lucrative business, football comes out on top by a long shot, commanding $18.6 billion of the market. Mumbai, the state capital of Maharashtra, banned the usage, sale, distribution and storage of single-use plastic on June 23rd. It's been over two months now that the plastic has been banned in the city. Today, we are going to go to different areas and markets in Mumbai and check whether the plastic is still being used or not. Let's give it a check. locations in the city, we found that plastic bags can still be found in Mumbai. BMC has said that they have collected over 8 million of rupees by putting penalties on people who were found using plastic. But plastic can still be very easily found in the city. So is plastic ban really faring well in Mumbai? All right, uh, several stories just like that one on the website BloombergQuint.com. Of course, you'll find all the live market action over the course of the day. Do pay attention to the rupee and the bond markets as well as the equity markets in trade today. But here are just a couple of stories that you'll find if you look up the website as of now. U.S. Def Defense Secretary Jim Mattis and Secretary of State Michael Pompeo will travel to New Delhi this week in an effort to seal a new defense cooperation agreement with their Indian counterparts despite tensions over threatened American sanctions. The meeting is slated for day after tomorrow. Looming large though is the prospect that the US will impose economic sanctions on India unless it significantly reduces purchase of oil from Iran and cancels a planned $6 billion purchase of S-400 anti-aircraft missiles from Russia. Indian officials, meanwhile, have said that the Russian arms deal will go on as planned. Foreign funds have started winding up for reworking uh, or, or rather reworking uh, their structure after India's market regulator barred non-resident Indians from controlling them. That's a source-based report on Bloomberg Quint. In other news on the markets regulator, SEBI has dismissed questions over its jurisdiction in its probe into the alleged mis-selling by five brokerages in the over 5,500 crore rupee payment scam at the erstwhile National Spot Exchange. 
Well, that's all you need to know going to trade today. Uh, up next is Indian Open, so do stay tuned. This is Bloomberg Quit.